we're going to talk about uh, debugging, so syntax errors. When we are writing programs in uh, Java, the compiler is our first line of defense against errors. It can catch syntax errors. Syntax errors represent grammar errors in the use of the programming language. They are the easiest to find and correct. The compiler will tell you where it got into trouble and its best guess as to what you did wrong. So here we can see some syntax errors that are uh, most common. Uh, these are misspelled variable and method names. Uh, forgetting to add the semicolon at the end or forgetting to close the parentheses where we have some or the square brackets or the curly brackets. And this is an example of a syntax error message. Um, and it's telling us here that a semicolon is expected um, and probably was uh, it was omitted when the code was written. So usually the error is on the uh, exact line indicated by the compiler or the line just before it. However, if the problem is in correctly nested uh, braces, the actual error may be at the beginning of the nested block. If we look at the instructions, it says try to compile the code and find the syntax errors in debug.java. Debug.java is our um, file name. And we've seen before we have a class, a class called debug. Then we have the main method. And we have here a couple of uh, system.out.println statements. So these are going to display some output on the screen. But right from the start, we can see that here, for example, is missing the semicolon at the end. Of course, we're not going to correct it because the whole point of uh, this is to see a, um, an error in action. So to see the actual error message that we will get um, that the compiler is going to give us. So I'm going to go Java C debug dot class. Okay, so I'm going to use Java C. So we're going to call the compiler and we're going to tell the compiler, please compile me this class called debug dot class dot Java actually, sorry. And when it tried to do that is giving us an error and it says semicolon expected and it's telling us on line 8. So let's have a, a look at the line 8 is exactly here and of course we are getting the the error. Okay. We're going to fix it of course. Now we're going to add the semicolon at the end. I'm going to go back to the command prompt here and I'm going to press the up arrow on my on my keyboard and this way we're going to get the last command that was typed. In our case, of course, is Java C debug.java. And of course, now if we're going to run it and then call it again, of course, we're not going to get any more errors because we um, already fixed it here. Going on to the ne next uh, section, we're going to have a look at runtime errors. So if our program has no compile time errors, it will run. This is where the fun really starts. Errors, which happen during program execution, so at runtime, after successful compilation are called runtime errors. Okay, so the, the type of the errors that we will get after the program has been compiled. So if we haven't done any syntax errors, then the next time where our program might stumble upon is during the program execution. Okay. And this is called the runtime at runtime. Okay. Runtime errors occur when a program with no compile time errors asks the computer to do something that the computer is unable to reliably do. Okay. So the, the previous errors that we've seen, the syntax errors, are compile time errors. Okay. 
And now the errors that happen during the execution of the program, so it means that it su successfully passed the compile time uh, check, okay? So if there haven't been any um, any syntax errors, any compile time errors, it's going to go on to the execution of the program that we wrote. And that is called the runtime, okay? And now it's going to check here. Are there any errors? And we might get a runtime error if we're asking the computer. So if our program that we, if the program that we wrote is something that a computer is unable to reliably do. Now we have an example of the runtime errors and it says division by zero is also known as a division error or trying to open, for example, a file that doesn't exist. And this also is um, is part of the runtime uh, possible errors that we might get. There is no way for the compiler to know about these kind of errors when the program is compiled. Okay, here's an example of a, run a runtime error message. So we get an exception, so it's written like this, in a thread, so it tells us the exception or the error or the problem is in our main method. And it's telling us here where it says Java 8. It, it could be there or some lines um, above or, or below line 8. And it's giving us here some sort of an explanation um, to give us a hint about what is causing the, the problem. And in this case would be uh, division by zero. Okay, So forward slash by zero. If we have a look at the instruction, it says there's a runtime error in debug.java. This program is supposed to find the ratio of a table's dimension, which is supposed to be 20 by 40. Okay. So let's have a look. We have a class called debug. We have the main method. We have an integer, so a variable whose name is width and is zero and the length uh, and another variable called length of type integer whose value is 40 and we say on line 8 we have another variable called ratio and ratio is set to be equal to this expression here so it's doing length divided by width we can see here that width is 0 and we know that this in Java will cause a runtime uh, error to be displayed and then on line 10, it says uh, system.out.println ratio. So print on the screen, whatever the result of this expression is, which is stored into ratio. Okay, the ratio being our variable name. And of course, because uh, it's giving us here the, these values, so 20 by 40, 20, we had to put the width to be 20 rather than 0 or 2. Okay. And now if it, we've run this, there's no problem um, compiling this class. We're not getting any errors, so we can move on to the next section. Then we, uh, we're going to now discuss about exceptions. It says in the last exercise, when we were dealing with um, runtime errors, you might have noticed a new word in the error message, exception. Java uses exceptions to handle errors and the other exceptional events. Exceptions are the conditions that occur at runtime and may cause the termination of the program. When an exception occurs, Java displays a me uh, message that includes the name of the exception, the line of the program where the exception occurred, and the stack trace. The stack trace includes the method that was running, the method that invoked it, the method that invoked that one, and so on. Make sure to examine it. Some common exceptions that you will see in the wild. So we're going to see an arithmetic expression, which is exactly what we've seen in the previous example. It was an arithmetic expression when we tried to divide by zero. And these ones means that something went wrong during an arithmetic operation, for example, division by zero. Then a null pointer exception 
is if we tried to access an instance variable or invoke a method on an object that is currently null, array index out of bounds exception, it means that the index we are using is neither negative or greater than the last index of the array, i.e. array dot length minus one. Okay, so um, an array length minus one, it would mean get the last element, okay? So the last element of an array would be at the index length minus one, okay? Because for example, if we have an array that holds four elements, it means that its last element is gonna be um, found at index three and not four. It, it might have four elements, but the index of its last element is gonna be length which was four minus one, okay? Because we know that um, in arrays and in programming in general, uh, whenever we're talking about arrays, the counting starts at zero, okay? So the first element in an array would be, in our case, starting at zero, okay? And in programming in general. And then file not found exception, Java didn't find the file that was looking for, that it was looking for. If we look at the instructions, it says run the code to revisit the arithmetic ex uh, exception you saw in the previous exercise. Then move on to the next exercise to see how you can use exceptions to your advantage. Okay, so we're gonna run this code. And of course we're getting this exception. Okay, so this represents that um, an error. So it tells us there's an error in the program. And it says in the thread main, so this must be the, the method where this um, error uh, occurred. And it's telling us it's an arithmetic expression. And is what was the reason? Well, because we've tried to divide by zero. And also it tells us, it gives us a hint about where the error might, uh, might be found in our code. And it says here in uh, line eight, because we're trying to divide 40 by zero, okay, with in our case here is zero. Okay, and um, we don't need to correct anything. It's simply um, a case of moving on to the next section. So we can have a look at how we can use these exceptions to our um, advantage. Moving on to the next section. How do we handle exception? So exception um, handling. Exception handling is an essential feature of Java programming that allows us to run, uh, that allows us to use runtime errors exceptions to make our debugging process a little easier. One way to handle exceptions is using the try catch block. Okay. The try statement allows you to define a block of code to be tested for errors while it's being executed. The catch statement allows you to define a block of code to be executed if an error occurs in the try block. Okay. So the try and catch keywords come in pairs, though you can also catch several types of exceptions in a single block. Okay. So what the way it looks like it's we're using the keyword try and then we're using the curly uh, braces we give it the block of code that we want to try and then we're using a catch keyword okay and then we put in the um, in the parentheses the type of exception that we want to display in case there's an error in our block of code in the try block, okay, and then of course we have to give it a name to our ex uh, to our um, exception to our error, okay. In this case, it's e. Okay, um, notice how we used system um, error println here instead of the system out dot println. System dot e double r dot println will print the standard error and the text will be in red. You can also chain exceptions uh, together. 
So you can have a try block followed by um, brackets that are followed by um, curly braces. And then inside, of course, we're going to have the block of uh, code to try. And then we can catch multiple exceptions or multiple errors. So try this code. If there's a problem there with null pointer exception, then throw this um, exception. So handle this exception using the code that we're going to put in here. If uh, this is not a type of exception, null pointer exception, maybe it's an arithmetic exception okay then use this code if our the type of the error is an arithmetic expression okay except uh, arithmetic exception you can learn more about exceptions and handling them here instructions put the code that you think will cause an arithmetic exception into a try block okay Create a catch block that catches the arithmetic expression and prints the error message to the terminal. Okay. So what we can do is we can add the try catch like we've seen before. Okay. So I'm going to try like this. Try and then catch. Okay. And we're going to try this. I'm going to paste it inside the try block. Okay. Let's try that. And then we're going to try and catch an arithmetic expression. So we're going to say catch this one like so and we're actually gonna copy this yeah just to give it some some body there to print Of course, we're going to change the name like so. Okay, so I had to just change the um, to remove one of the uh, round parentheses here. Um, and once run, of course, we're getting arithmetic exception, which is uh, this one. And then e dot get message. E, this one could have been anything we would have wanted. But of course, we have to, we would have had to, if this was the name of our exception, we would have to um, replace it, of course. And then we run the method called get message on our exception. Okay. So if I'm going to run it, it should work the same, which it does. Moving on to the next section, it says logic errors. So once we have removed the syntax errors and runtime errors, the program runs successfully. But sometimes the program still doesn't doesn't do what we want it to do, no, or no output is produced. These type of errors, which provide incorrect input but appears to be error free, are, call, are called logic errors. Logic errors occur when there is a design flaw in uh, the program. These are some of the most common errors that happen to uh, beginners and also usually the most difficult um, to eliminate. Because logical errors solely depend on the logical thinking of the programmer, your job is to figure out why the program didn't do what you wanted it to do. Some common logic errors program logic is flawed, some silly mistakes uh, in, for example, if an, in an if statement or a for while loop, this might be, say, um, being stuck maybe in a um, infinite loop. So there's a note here saying the logic errors don't have error messages. Sometimes programmers use a process called test driven development a way to drive uh, to give logic errors um, 
error messages and save yourself a lot of headaches. In the instructions, it says to run the debug.java. There should be no error messages. I'm going to run it right now. And indeed, we don't have any messages. But the program is supposed to output steps from 1 to 10. The program is somehow starting from 0. Find the logic error. Well, <clears throat> let's have a look. Uh, starting from 1. Well, in this case, it looks like we should be starting our uh, counter. So here we should be uh, starting it at 1 already, rather than starting at 0. Let's see, now it starts from 1 all the way to uh, 10. We're getting a tick mark here, meaning that um, this change we've done is OK. Moving on to the next section. Debugging techniques. If you have examined the code thoroughly and you are sure the compiler is compiling the right source file, it is time to desperate measures. Divide and conquer. Comment out temporarily. Comment out or, or temporarily delete half the code to isolate an issue. If the program compiles now, you know the error is in the code you deleted. Bring back about half of what you removed and repeat. If the program still doesn't compile, the error must be in the error in the code that remains. Delete about half of the remaining code and repeat, so so on and so forth. In most code editors, one can highlight a block of code and use the keyboard shortcut command plus uh, forward slash to comment it out. So divide and conquer was one way to deal with um, to try and uh, like conquer these uh, uh, logical uh, exceptions or logical errors. And the second one would be to print uh, statements for the rescue. So to use a system.out.println to check variable return values at various points throughout the program. A lot of the time with logic errors, there was a flawed piece of logic, a miscalculation or a missing step or etc. By printing out the values at different stages of the execution flow, you can then hopefully pinpoint where you made a mistake. We have the instructions here. It says here's an area calculator.java program that solves for the area of different shapes. So for a triangle, rectangle, and circle, and is giving us here the uh, formula to calculate that. There is a logical error. It is not calculating the areas right for one of the shapes. Find the bug. Well, we're going to try and do Java C area calculator the Java. Okay, and we can try and comment out some of these, um, I guess, some of these, uh, these lines of code. Okay, as, um, well, to try and find which one of these triangle, rectangle, or circle, so which one of these shapes had the, the wrong um, uh, formula to calculate it. We're going to simply move on to the next uh, section here. Uh, the review. Finding bugs is a huge part of a programmer's life. Don't be intimidated by them. Just embrace them. Errors in your code mean you're trying to do something cool. In this lesson, we have learned about the three types of Java errors. Syntax errors. They are found by the compiler. Runtime errors. These are errors found by checks in a running program. And logic errors and errors found by the programmer looking for causes of erroneous results. Okay, so um, we can uh, check out some of the uh, these websites, Stack Overflow, well, of course, the mighty Google that we all use to Google out um, maybe solutions whenever we get stuck. And there's also a, a post on uh, on here. Sometimes 
once you've tracked down a bug, you might still be confused on how to fix it. Whenever you want to know more about how Java works and what it can do, the best place to go is the documentation. You can find the Java documentation at Oracle, so on the original Oracle website. And the instructions, they simply wish us well in our bug squashing journey. All right, and this is um, this is uh, the 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 end of the debugging um, lesson in Java.